Shall we begin? Let's begin now. Hello and welcome to the Ticket Stub, your favorite place for movie news and reviews. Ticket Stub comes out every Thursday, sometimes, on all podcast platforms. <laughs> And Thursdays at noon on 104.5 and 106.1 from beautiful Conroe, Texas. You can follow us on Twitter and Facebook. The Ticket Stub has a ticket sponsorship with the Grand Theater and Amstar Cinemas. You can also visit IRLoneStar.com for information about the show and sponsorships, or you can drop us a line at 936-647-3776. And do not forget to leave a five-star review. My name is Connor. I'm one of the hosts of the show. Joined in studio by my friend Chris Appel. How are you doing, sir? Doing well. Doing right, well. Good. I missed you guys. I missed you, too. I, I know you've been busy. Hey, you're I, not, I haven't introduced busy. you yet. Hi, Dick. What's up? I pop in every time. <laughs> you pop in every single time. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. it's been too long, guys. Has it really been since long. October since we've had a show? It's October been exactly 10th? one month. Yeah, yeah, we missed the Halloween special. I know. It's we been kind of a... Uh, you know what's funny? It's been a little, since a little I've known Chris, famine. I don't think of Halloween. I think of Chris when Halloween comes around. I'm like, I wonder what Chris is doing. I did it up good this year. I think of that sweater. That sweater that you what wore What can we ever do? Oh, let's do that together next year. Can I like hang out with you? I had... No. I had... <laughs> no. 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 I carved 11 pumpkins in two hours this year. That's hard to do. It, yeah, it, I carved they all pumpkins out really with my good. at the fam. We did a pumpkin carving night, mm-hmm. and uh, it took us a while. I mean, well, what, what's your you trick? Buy, I know this did is you super... buy those kits? I did buy the little yeah, cheap that, crappy that's... kit. You know, those are the best. Well, I said the, the, tried, the little used, saw works really well. Yeah, I've used real knives and things, and it just doesn't do. Chris, as good. I know this is like uh, this is like three weeks old topic here, but yeah. how do you car? How do you scrape the inside well, really well? Because that's the part that I struggle. I have with. an extremely sharp knife. And so when I cut the top off, it's great radio, right? Here. <laughs> I cut the top. Do you cut off. it big or small? How big is your little top? Fairly here? big. Okay, and see, then, I think uh, that's part of my problem. Yeah, and then I'll take a very sharp knife and kind of go around the inside, and then. But you don't have to get all of it out. People think you do, yeah. but you don't, because all you see is the face of the pumpkin when it's lit up. That's true. I mean, and you can't really see the strings and stuff. So plus the strings make it look like it's like brains and stuff. So. And have you seen the one where it's like barfing the the seeds yeah. out? Yeah, and funny. then I bleach them. I spray them. I spray them with straight bleach. Why? On all the cut. To make them last longer. That makes them last longer. Yeah, they lasted a week. Oh, my goodness. A week. All right, guys. Well, for 2020, let's make sure we all cut and bleach (laughs) our pumpkins. Cut and bleach. (laughs) Uh, Anyways, we are going to get started. We've got to rewind, talk about the movies that we've seen over the last week. We're going to do some movie news, talk a little bit about the box office for this weekend, and then we're going to play some little games. Not even games, just a topic starter called Firsts, where we're going to talk about some of the first (laughs) things. Is that what it's called? Yeah, first. That's what I named it, just because everything's... Yeah, so Chris, tell us about the first time. Right, man. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's get started with box office breakdown. Here's where we're going to look at what's in theaters or coming out. I wanted to talk a little bit about Ford v. Ferrari. Uh, so this is coming out yeah. this weekend. Uh, this is a story of uh, the uh, of the two companies, Ford and Ferrari. As Here, I'm pulling up the IMDb. Uh, American car designer Carol Shelby and driver Ken Miles battle corporate interference, the laws of physics, and their own personal demons to build a revolutionary, revolutionary race car for Ford and challenge Ferrari at the 24 hour of Le Mans in 1966. Uh, this has 91% on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, it's got a, it's got uh, Matt Damon and it's got uh, what's his name? Uh, Christian, Christian Bale. Bale. Thank you. <laughs> that guy. Batman. Batman. Yeah. Excuse me. Or on set instigator. <laughs> you think he had any incidents in this movie? I haven't heard yet. No, I don't but, know. Uh, what do y'all think about this? I mean, have you seen the trailer? I mean, we're playing it right now. I, I feel weird when they do biopics of things that you already know what happened because I feel like that in, that it kind of takes the ending away. Well, it takes the screenwriter like you don't really know if it's true or not. The screenwriter is like, well, you know they're going to be, you know, talking all about challenging the Ferrari, so you know they're going to use really cool lingo. But you know, in reality, it might have been Mr. Shelby was just like, yeah, we're going to make a car. And I'm really I like making cars. So yeah, let's go let's go do that. Mm-hmm. You don't think they like interview? Does that make anybody? sense to you? You don't think they like asked anybody though, or like interview? Well, or? I'm sure they did, but it's like you got to still spice it up. It's yeah. a movie, so that's the one thing I kind of when I watch these movies, you're getting uh, like which which story am I really getting? Am I getting what really happened, or am I getting what Matt Damon thought Mr. Shelby really would sound cool if he did this or that? And and I also think it's a sad story. I knew the story before, uh, and it's it's you know. It is. I'm not gonna. I can't say any more of it. So I have a question: Has Christian Bale just given up on being any sort of consistent weight? <laughs> it's, uh, part, it's like part of his like. Oscar. Yeah, I mean, he's like. It, it, when there, when was there a movie where he's like his normal weight or whatever? I don't even know what his normal weight is now. Well, maybe that's what his dedication as an actor is to that level where he takes a part and he goes, "What would this guy? What's his weight? What's he look like? 
what does he sound like? And he goes for it. Well, I think that's pretty, he probably does that, yeah. But also some of it I think is kind of like blowhard acting where it's like if I lose a bunch of weight, then it seems like I'm a better actor. I yeah. Like, I don't know. Everyone's like, oh, my gosh. Well, what's funny his body, is Dick Cheney. His, his body well, was I, I laughed at this trailer because the guy who plays uh, Ford looks like Dick Cheney. I'm like, that's who they should have gotten to play <laughs> Dick Cheney. Uh, but, uh, but no, I, I think that's what he does. I think he's one of those actors that chooses his 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 role and then he goes with it meaning like he didn't he didn't, he didn't just say hey send me some scripts you know i want to see what's going on i gotta make some money it's more of like i really like this role i want to do this role I'm and then he, he, he completely dedicates his whole time to it so he calls his aunt and is like sorry i can't make the birthday i'm filming you know doing that kind of stuff because some actors are like always working they're always trying to find work but like this guy seems more project-based where he's like oh i'm gonna be working for the next eight months fine with me you know i'm gonna i'm gonna risk it i'm gonna go for it which I like all of his roles. All his roles are really good. Oh, yeah, and he's yeah. well done. And, uh, yeah. Well, I wrote Oscar Coin Tender, but I actually meant Oscar Contender. Do you think this is going to be one that gets talked about like a few months from now? Uh, yeah. It has major players in it. So. Yeah. And I, I'm hoping that their performances are going to be really good. I mean, this is this has to be – it's going to have some action, but it's going to be a character-driven thing more than anything else, mm-hmm. right? Like, look, well, the story itself is fascinating because a lot of people don't know about the race – the Mons and stuff yeah. like that. So when they, if they do a good job explaining it to like the layman people who come and see the movie, they're like, "Oh, Lame I get it, man." So man. see, we're expecting it to do good at the theater, but I, I have an older crowd. We we skew much older. Oh, this and, has and dad this written all over, right it. up their alley, big time. So I, dad nas- and son. nationally, I don't know, but for us, it's it's gonna. My dad, I'm probably really gonna take good. my dad to it. Do you have a handicap spot? We do. Cool. <laughs> There's a there's a really good documentary called the 24 Hour War that I that I've seen that talks a lot about this because Le Mans 24 hours yeah and it talks, it's an interesting race so. yeah really interesting and that goes it goes into Ford and Ferrari basically is the whole point of it of the documentary and it's really interesting one of the things about that time period was how many people how many guys were just dying all the time I mean all like they'd be racing these cars and they were pushing them to the brink of safety and all that kind of, you know and they used to like catch on fire and stuff like if the bladder of fuel would I don't even well the you know, neat thing too the about bladder of well fuel. that's one thing I liked about <laughs> I got the one race of those. I was drain my fuel bladder yeah. well that's the neat thing about the race because it's not one of those like it's an endurance thing so you, if you are a car manufacturer you really do want to win this race because you kind of show people hey our cars because they don't just use one car during the race yeah they, I think in yeah, this they one, do. I, I think... Uh, yeah, they, they do. It's multiple drivers. Multiple no, drivers. No, they have multiple cars. Trust me, because when they break well, down, they use another car. That's what happened in this race. They Ferrari used, I think, three cars. Well, I think three, they, they, I mean, they, they have, have multiple, team cars. Yeah, they have multiple teams, but but each team can only use one car, I think. But there are multiple well, cars. You can have, you can have a used. It's not the, Ferrari. It's not the same car running 24 hours. It is. It is. I'm pretty sure it's not. I promise you. It is. I'm pretty sure it's not. Yeah, it is. Because that's how Ford won that year because the Ferrari broke down and they used another Ferrari. Well, there's teams. There's more. There's so you can have like two Ferraris in the race. No, I'm talking about. Okay. Well, but they each have to go 24 hours. Yes. Yeah. With different drivers. With different drivers. Dick's not. He's not agreeing. No. <laughs> I guess but we'll, I'm probably we'll, wrong. We'll, we'll, I'm probably wrong. We'll have to watch the movie to find out. We'll have to watch the movie to find out. Well, yeah, the, the, the answer to your question, that's the one thing I get hesitant about biopics is, you know, the screenwriter already knows the story, so it's like, do I spice it up? Do I go find transcripts? Do I find letters and things like that? And, you know, that's one thing I loved about the HBO series, the John Adams series, is the screenwriter based a lot of it off his letters to, he wrote to Abigail's wife. And when did that come out? That was like that was it's ju- a Paul Giamatti. Paul right? Giamatti played, huh. yeah. Okay. But it's like that. That to me is a neat insight to where how do I develop a script for this great story? Yeah, and I'm and sure this guy did a sure. job. I, I mean, I'm pretty sure he didn't just read a book. And he goes, did a job. Yeah. So hopefully he did. Well, cool. All right. Well, let's let's move on. Uh, CNBC.com had an article about Disney Plus. We're gonna spend a little time talking about Disney Plus. Uh, they already in the first what has it been few days have 10 million subscribers. That's a lot. I don't doubt 10, it. 10 million people have signed up for Disney+. Plus. Now, the one caveat is they're doing a seven-day free trial, so they're thinking that some of that 10 million may fall off. Well, there's the also trial. a Verizon deal, too. Yeah, well, yeah, and if you have Verizon, it's a free year, I think, right? Yeah. Or a cheap year something or something like, like that. that, whatever. So they're projecting that they're going to get 60 to 90 million subscribers by 2024, so that's five years from now. Uh, Netflix has, just to compare, Netflix has, a hundred. what the article saying, Netflix has 158 million um, worldwide, six, right? Yeah, sixty million US. Hulu has twenty five million US subscribers. HBO has thirty four million. So if it got up to if it got up to sixty to ninety, it would become the second biggest. Uh, really, the, if it, if that's sixty to ninety American or US people, that'd be the biggest or one of definitely. 
I just feel like this has the legs to get there. Like I don't understand. Well, it has why more it than, I think this will dominate. Yeah. Because eventually, what I think what people don't really understand what it is, because it's like, is it every single Disney movie ever, or is it a rotation every year? They, ha- they add movies and take away movies. But I, if you're Disney, do you take away movies? No. I think they do. I, I don't see reading, why. Though. I was reading an article that it said some of the movies do expire. Is it just because of like a storage thing, like a like a server? I don't know. Kind of deal? I don't think so. it can't be. Because that's what's weird to me. But why, why would you not just keep every single thing on there? It, I mean, there uh, must to be a keep reason people cause, interested because Netflix does. Yeah, but leave it and add more. That's what I'm saying. I mean, if it wasn't a problem of bandwidth, like why would you not want to have every single thing you have available? To be seen. Well, because we're used to Netflix well, and Amazon know. where they rotate things because you know they don't own it. But now we're getting to that year where they've been developing their own content for the past six plus years. So now they're like, okay, how big is the library now? And with Disney launching it, no one really knows how big the library is because everyone thought it was just going to be all Disney stuff. No, it's unbelievable. Even The Simpsons. I mean, it's got. Think about, no, Disney Channel alone. Yeah, it's Disney Channel alone. They had the original. I mean, they have original movies. They have. Which are like not actually. It's like the ones they played on their on their channel, not on the actual theaters. All the theatrical yeah. stuff, all the Star Wars, all the Marvel, all, like Fox, you know, like the Simpsons and all that kind of stuff. Speaking of the Simpsons, there's a lot of scuttlebutt about the aspect uh, ratio. I've Did seen you that. Hear about that. It cuts some of the jokes out. Have yeah. you? Have I have you not started watching the Simpsons yet. No, but they like they, they're doing it in widescreen, so it cuts the top portion yeah. and the bottom. And some of the jokes are like visual. Like the one that I saw was about the beer, and it had like the three different Duff, Duff Light, Duff Dry, Duff Regular. And the joke is that they're all coming from the same pipe. Like, it's all the same beer that but they just the bottle in missing. different things. But you can't see that because they cut it off. And so people are, I mean, you know, come on. I mean, I guess it is. What, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, how mad Well, what's we interesting be to me, because I kind of, I imagine the process of con- like converting all these things. And I don't think it was like three guys and a bunch of servers going, all right, here's our Disney Plus settings. Just run it through that. Like, I think there is a person looking at each episode going, all right, we're going to transfer us over this kind of codec. We have to do this certain type of ratio. And I'm, I'm surprised they didn't try to work around it. Because yeah. when you see that, you're like, oh, that's kind of obvious, guys. And I know a lot of people were upset, yeah. especially for people who do uh, like Hulu and Comcast. They're, they're noticing that all the DVR movies, that they're sped up or they're missing stuff. Hmm. And I know it's a big issue on air, airplanes. Okay. But... But you know, also if you have thirty years, thirty seasons of Simpsons, maybe you just like set. What I'm saying, they probably have some <laughs> default setting, yeah, like just exactly, running through. Exactly. Sure. Yeah. I got but you, you, would, have to. you would hope somebody's like, all They'll right, fix it. I mean, well, I, I guess uh, when I, when it was on FFX or FXX now yeah, or whatever, F- FXX, you could choose the aspect ratio of what you want to watch. Well, they so don't want to be. It. They don't want it to be four by three because it looks old. It looks, you know, it looks bad. Well, yeah, but it is old. I know, but I'm just saying that it looks better on widescreen to be fill able, up your whole TV. You should be able. To watch it in the well, manner the, uh, of which it was originally. Yeah. Yeah. I don't see is, why they wouldn't do that. Disney Plus is three days old. They're going to fix all this stuff. Yeah. I mean, they're going to get like this well, is again, part of the beta. I think almost. that's part of the problem with Disney Plus is you don't really know what it is. Yeah. So but like, they're going to people don't think Disney and Simpsons. They just don't think. I mean, no, I don't think no. that. But you know, if I'm a huge Simpsons guy, well, now I'm going to get Disney Plus now that I know. But I mean, you can talk about the peers being upset about aspect ratios. But. Well, they might have to do. They might have to do like Netflix, where with Netflix you can do like kids, you know, and then you can have like an adult profile. And if you have yeah. a kids profile, it's well, not going to show you. Well, they talked about like, having that label where they're older Disney content. They said it might not be suitable for like yeah. new age stuff, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is interesting because I'm glad they chose the route of keeping it in there instead yeah. of just trying to brush it out and just forget about it. Well, so. and so uh, you know, but to your point, Chris, about stuff coming and going there was a couple things as i was I, I, we got it and as i was flipping through it a couple things haven't arrived yet so it's mm. old content but it's coming still like yeah one of them was like coming in may i think and something else was coming in like february so they're doing some sort of i mean there's tons available unbelievable amount that is available as of the launch but some still to come and then the other thing is they're doing their own content already i mean the mandalorian is an example of that there's some Anna Kendrick rom com uh, that looks stupid about uh, she's like Santa's daughter or something like that. And anyways, so they're they're gonna start doing their own stuff, and it's gonna be the same thing. This library is it the is gonna... Santa Claus, Claus G, G? G? or what? Caesar, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. But I think what if if I were Disney, what I would do is spend some time focusing on adult content to get <laughs> yes, exactly. No, well, I mean, on uh, that, no, my pre- my, what's gonna I, my content. prediction with Disney Plus is. They're going to realize they don't really need to create content specifically for the streaming channel. They can focus on just generating content for their existing platforms like movies and the Disney channel. 
and then they just move it into Disney Plus because it, I know there's there's a reason they chose to do the Mandalorian because they want people to sign on that aren't diehard cartoon fans, whether they might be a Star Wars fan. But eventually they're going to figure out people don't really care. They just want to watch all their old Disney stuff. Yeah, but I think if you're a parent and you say like, well, we'll get this for you. But maybe we, you know, but you want to have something for them also where maybe they would also utilize it. But why would they spend money thing. on like a, di- like a child's program and just have it on Disney Plus if they're not going to put it on the Disney well, Channel? Well, I'm sure they will. I'm, sh- I'm not saying they won't do it across all platforms. I'm just, my point is, I think they, if I were them, I would try to at least come up with a couple uh, tentpole things besides just Marvel because like Marvel and Star Wars is appealing to the same crowd right there. You need something that could be a little broader appeal that any parent might, you know, any adult might look at and say, I, I would, you know, that's worth it. That's worth having. I'm going to definitely wait a little bit yeah. to see how the overall reaction is after Seven a few bucks, months. Dude, dude yeah, it's got everything. I mean, it's got literally well, all I was so having much this stuff. discussion. We talked about this before about, you know, streaming and which one to buy. And I realized when I was, when I was having a conversation with my buddy, I go, the thing that I love about this new age is there's not a contract. So why are we why are we debating on which one to get or not? Like you could literally switch it every month. Mm-hmm. You spend five minutes canceling it. Yeah, but nobody does that. But what I'm just saying, like a <laughs> yeah. lot of people are like, which ones to get? I'm like, well, at least we're not in Comcast contract where I call and be like, oh, it's four hundred dollars to mm-hmm. cancel. No, you don't. Like you can just literally get Disney Plus for a month and go. You know what? I'm gonna switch over to Netflix because the new Stranger Things came out. Oh, then I'm gonna switch over to HBO because. You know, this whatever they they're yeah. really the Watchmen or something. So I don't. You might s- just invented a new app that you need to create, Dick. A one that where you set the months you want to have which mm-hmm. streaming services, and then it auto cancel and renews it for you. Well, I mean, I that's, 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 a, be a, good that's a good idea. Well, I think people will manage it, but when people talk about oh, which one's the best, I'm like just get whatever one you want to watch and then move on because HBO Max is going to confuse the hell out of people. What's what's Max? So HBO Max is coming out, I think, like in February maybe, but it's like a combination of different studios and HBO. And people are like, well, is this is HBO Go? Yeah. Plus some more stuff. And it's confusing the hell out of a lot of people. And it's twenty dollars, I think, a month. And, oh wow. And, no one's gonna buy well, HBO's fourteen already. It, yeah, HBO's already fourteen, but I think they're combining like it's not I, I don't know the details in front of me, but it's like Paramount or something like that. And like studio movie studios are working together and plus other T V stations are working with HBO. They're like, it's, so, it's like we gotta we gotta get big or die. Probably like we can't well, we can't all just stay on our own. Yeah, well, it's also like when I think of Disney Plus, the I think of it as the vault because yeah. you know the Disney Vault they always talk about. I'm like, well, just do a Disney Vault online where I pay you a monthly subscription, and I get access to all your stuff. That's basically what this is. I, think. I know, it's, but but why produce your own content for it where you're already in other markets? You know, like the Mandalorian, for example. Why not put that on TV? Yeah, I mean, I, I think because they want people. Do you think it's because it's rated R and stuff like that? Well, no, I mean, I don't know how they, well, like, what platform would they put it on TV? They can't put it on the Disney Channel. They have ABC. Yeah, I, maybe so. I don't know. I mean, I think right now they're really wanting some exclusive content. Yeah, where it's gonna, well, no, I get why they're, I mean, doing they're trying it. to push I'm just, you to the app. Yeah, I'm, in the I'm future, I'm they, they, maybe they will. Stuff, I don't know. So. All right, well, one other thing, and you kind of, I think, alluded to this, Dick. Uh, MovieWeb.com, uh, Disney Plus adds warning to problematic movies from the past. So the only problem with Disney is that it's been around since like the early 1900s when people weren't as progressively minded as they might be now. And so uh, certain things that came out like in the early, early days of Disney, uh, a lot of this people already know about that Song of the South uh, Mm -hmm. cartoon. Um, There's the one uh, shoot. Is that Song of the South the same one with the crows? Yeah. 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 Stuff like that. So anyways, there's like 11 or 12 or something like that of these Disney cartoons where they've put warnings at the front of them to basically say like, listen, we know this is historical context. We know that this is a little bit racist and we apologize and we don't think that way anymore. I'm paraphrasing what the ad probably says, uh, but it's just funny. My question was, do you, do you appreciate that they included that recognizing that it's part of, you know, the past or is there really, should they have just, well, what's strange about it it is no one, I don't think anyone was really asking for it. Like who's going to go watch song of the South and be like, Oh yeah. I mean, besides (laughs) for historical purposes or racist people. But no, there's other stuff they can focus on. <laughs> they, got, they got Donald Trump, right? They got 4chan or whatever. They can go to all those message board. I don't know. I mean, it's it's such a tough call. I mean, they should have the right to keep that in there for for sure. But well, I, I think mean, they, I, they I have the know. right to. But what, should they? But I'm talking about people not. sitting down on their couch searching for the stuff. Like I can see it just for the giggle part. But like, yeah. no one's gonna be like, oh, I need to appreciate unless you're like writing a paper or something. Mm-hmm. That that's I, the thing. They probably should not have done it. No, with it, the way society is today, 
because the only the only people who are going to watch it are people who heard that it's bad right. and want to see yeah, what it is. Yeah, I don't yeah, really yeah. get it. It's not like it's going to be on the front page, like, oh, new release, you Song let of the my South. Child watch Song of the South. <laughs> We're well, supposed to be a family yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah, like who's ser- like if it wasn't there, would we have ever realized it wasn't? I mean, you know, yeah. people are searching it. Like, oh, are you kidding me? They said it was everything Disney, and this is a, this is an outrage. Anyways, all right. Well, last thing. Well, Pull oh, go ahead. I got a question for Chris after we finish the discussion. Uh, well, it's, it has to do with streaming, right. so I got a question. Well, then hit it right now because we're going to move on to Charlie's Angels okay. for oh. one, one minute. Well, 60, 60 seconds. <laughs> uh, well, no, we, we can do whatever we want. Okay. Uh, one thing I, I was reading about, Chris, was Netflix was trying to buy Landmark Theaters mm-hmm. from Mark Cuban. Okay. And it, the deal apparently was too expensive or whatever. And I started thinking about... What about you and the grand and stuff like that? Netflix is in as they're trying to buy theaters so they can play their movies. Do you see that being good for the movie industry or bad for the movie industry? Because right now, the movie theaters, from my understanding, aren't owned by a production company. Or well, are they? I mean, there was a law that. Uh, it was cra- uh, it was it's, I forget what year, but I think it was like in the '40s where movie studios couldn't own movie theaters mm. because you could pretty much wipe out All half the country. Yeah, yeah. you just say, "Well, I'm only playing my that's what my I fe- stuff." Yeah. Well, um, let me ask you this: Will you sell your theater to Netflix? <laughs> well, I don't. I don't make that decision, <laughs> but yes, I'm probably sure they would. But uh, okay, I, you listening, Netflix? Yeah, I I don't know. You know, it's yeah. I would say like let's say if the the theater down the road was playing this, you know, like a uh, what's the movie with Sandra Bullock? The Bird That's a one. Lot. Or Bird Box 2. They were playing Bird Box 2. We didn't get it because they're a Netflix theater. Yeah, I think that's a problem. Uh, well, because well, like, well, the reason it came up was they were talking about buying River Oaks Theater. Because River Oaks is, has some agreement with Landmark. Like, it's kind of weird who owns it, who doesn't own it. And it, you're talking about those small theaters in small towns that have two screens that... You know, I don't really know the le- the legal turnaround to get Netflix movies in the Oscars. Just like how many theaters it has to be on, but I imagine that's what they're trying to do. But I I think it'd be interesting, especially in the market here in Conroe, because there's like what seven theaters, in a, like a fifty mile radius kind of thing, and it's kind of like probably more than that. Well, do I need to go like oh uh, Netflix is over here at the Grand, Amazon's over here at AMC, and then I I don't think it'll ever really get that specific, but. Yeah, I mean, I, there was a law against that. Yeah. So I don't know if that's just been reversed or it's like some kind of technicality where they, they can do that. I would think that it would be detrimental for everybody but Landmark. Well, I think it might be. <laughs> it, I bet it has to do some with how many screens you have. Because, like, the River Oaks Theater is a, like, select, how, how would you call it? Artisan? Artesian uh, uh, theater? Artisanal. Well, we have theaters that are, like, in close proximity. Artesian is, like, what water is, I think. They're in, uh, they're in right. close. Yeah, you're the water guy. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> We have theaters that are in close proximity to other theaters, and and for some reason they can't get all the same the movies. Same movies. Yeah. They have to split the product throughout the year. Yeah, uh, and that is that's kind of along these lines. But I I just can't imagine because I don't really happening. understand the distribution thing. I'm not fully aware of that. Like, because I know like when certain they would have when to, the indie boom happened, like in the late '90s, and like Pan's Labyrinth would had they had to go to the AMC 30 in Houston to go see Pan's Labyrinth, and I'm like, man, it's a 45 to an hour drive. But I wanted I, to see it. I believe so. they probably could buy it, but I think they would have to release all of their movies to everybody. But there would be some sort of thing like, well, it doesn't cost us anything to show it in our theaters, but you know it does. So they would save a little bit. But. Well, yeah, that's what. Well, I mean, Netflix is trying to be trying to do something. They're they're going to be dying pretty soon, in my opinion, like thirty years down the road, unless they start developing really good content that keeps them relevant. Because all the major players who've been major playing for the last hundred years in film are not going to team up with them unless you know they work yeah. something out. All yeah. right. Well, interesting stuff. We'll see how it goes as far as theater acquisitions and uh, land mergers and uh, business. It's just business. I just want to ask Chris that. Thanks, yeah. Chris. Cool. Uh, well, we'll just mention this for one second. Collider.com had an article. Charlie's Angels reboot is one of the best reboots of the year. How could this be true? This cannot possibly be true, right? It has well, the first, from Twilight. Well, first, we're not the demographic for this movie, so I'm hoping there is anything can happen, in my opinion, because I don't think they made this movie for me. Elizabeth Banks directed it. She directed. I think she wrote it too. Yeah, and I like what's Elizabeth what's Banks. the recent movie she did with the two girls? That was oh, was that the, wasn't her? Uh, the one where they're like, no, 
Yeah. Were they graduating her. high that, school? That was Olivia Wilde. That was Olivia uh, Wilde. That was Olivia Wilde. Yeah, you're right. Oh, uh, well, she did do something There's else. more than one, like three females in Hollywood. Oh, wow. You think Ooh. they're all the same, Chris? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> do you have rules at the Grand that you can only play? No, I'm just kidding. No. Uh, anyways, I just feel like this is going to be stupid, mostly because of Kristen Stewart. Well, I think, it, yeah. like, I think it's interesting that we look at promotions of films, and especially when an all-female cast happens, for some reason there's a lot of attention to it and a sense of like, let this one be a successful one. Let this because in the in the past, all female cast movies have haven't really like broke the sphere of wonderful like best movie ever. And like, what, what's the last three female movies you can think of that have all female cast that aren't a comedy? The Help, The Help, and then there was. But I'm talking like The Help did very well in the Oscars. So what what other one? I'm I'm trying to think of that wasn't a comedy. I know that kind of takes away Wonder from Wonder Woman. Oh, was that Widows? That was an all female cast. <laughs> Widows was that, that. That was pretty much all female. Yeah. That, but did they have. Was Widows. it like a. Oceans you know, 8. Oh, like really good? I'm talking about they're putting the vault. Oh. Yeah, Ocean's okay. 8. Oh, not in the vault. We're not putting that in the vault. That's, in the, tr- that's in the trash can. Oh, that's what that, I like that one. You were the only person who liked that one. Mm-hmm. You're right. I mean, the, the point is, you're right. Yeah, there's not a ton. And I know that. Well, the reason I say is because there's a lot of pressure on it now. And especially with this movie, I think Ghostbusters really screwed over a lot of future promotions. Oh, yeah, Ghostbusters. Really? Ghostbusters got like. <laughs> positive Put in the vault. they got positive push but it got negative reviews from the average person like it's not that good guys and hopefully yeah, but that had nothing to do with them being female that was just a it was just bad it was just bad it was well i am saying like it was promoted as oh this is gonna be a great movie and then we're like oh actually no it's just garbage and it has nothing to do with who's in charge. It's a garbage film. Mm-hmm. The last thing Elizabeth Banks directed was Pitch Perfect 2. Is that what you were thinking about, Chris? Uh, that, no. <laughs> that was not it. No. I think you're so. right. I was confused. But I think I can see this movie being good for the demographic they're making it for. Oh, Ariana Grande did the music. Yeah, so, with Miley there Cyrus. You go. Hey. Because I think, and I'd be interested, maybe if a female listener will go watch it, tell us what they think. What's the dude's name? Like Banks or something? What's the, like, uh, Agent Cody Banks? No. Uh, Charlie. Because I know they made that movie for you, Connor. <laughs> oh, no, no, Bosworth. What's the guy's name? There's like a there's like a uh, helper. Yeah, it's Charlie Bosley. Bosley. Oh, isn't that it? that is Elizabeth Banks. Okay, isn't it Charlie? Charlie is the main, but you don't ever yeah, see Charlie. Bosley yeah. is the, Charlie's like a mysterious character, like the Charlie's right hand person. Yeah, Bosley is the one who like handles them, like gives them their jobs or whatever. Yeah, and that is Elizabeth Banks in this movie. I figured that'd be a female as well. I think what they should have done to make it really wonderful is have Liam Nielsen in it, and he's the one that trains them. Liam and then is he the guy who has Le- the rating service? Liam Nielsen. <laughs> what was his name? Liam. Liam, Liam Neeson. Neeson. Yeah. Thank I think you. it's cool. Patrick Stewart's in it. Yeah, sir. That's Patrick pretty Stewart. Neat. Please respect him. Yes, I'm sorry. He uh, plays Charlie, right? But I think yeah, <laughs> he plays John Bosley, right. which I don't know how that relationship to Bosley is. But what, was it Bosley English? Is that what the whole idea no. was? No, it was it was like a, what, it was Bernie Mac. We're, we're screwing. We're screwing screw this up. It was Bill Murray in one. Yeah, Bill Murray, and then Tim Curry. Tim Curry was. I thought it was Bernie Mac in one of them. Charlie's Angels movie. Who was he? I think you're thinking of Crispin Glover, maybe. No. T- Tim Curry was in it. I think he might have been a villain or something like that. Oh, was that. he really? I, yeah. I, I don't know. Which I just saw National Lampoon's Loaded Weapon 1 the other day, which Me is too. what I should have done instead of Me what too. I did. And it's not too late to change. Yeah, he, play, he plays the... <laughs> yes, uh, the bad guy. Well, I love well, the opening henchman. scene with him. He plays the the brownie. What yes, do they call him? The Wilderness Girls. Wilderness yeah. Girls. <laughs> that was Man, a great scene. That's such a great movie. It's, oh, goodness. It's Dick, do we need to do break or do we just, yeah, do we just do power whatever. through? All right, let's move on to rewinds. Let's talk about the movies that we've seen over the last week. Uh, Dick and I saw the same movie, so we'll go well, second. Well, I saw it, too. Okay. Well, okay. So y'all are both doing Joker? You no, could, I can do Zombieland 2. Double tap. Could have done a group thing. Well, let's do it. Because I let's saw it. Well, well, you you talk thing. about your terrible movie well, real quick. I don't and need then we'll, to. No, talk about your terrible movie, and then we'll do a group thing about the Joker. <laughs> okay. What's your terrible movie called? Well, <laughs> my movie is called... Murder at the Campfire? Uh, What is it called? M- I don't know. Murder Slumber at- Party Massacre. Oh, that's, okay. that's what it's called. <laughs> Why are there, how many slumber party horror movies are there? There's three that I know of. I need. Is it Netflix do one? No, I don't know. I don't know. This is from 1982. The new version of that is when they're all in the same chat room, you know, like video chatting, and no, slowly, right. they, slowly yeah. it like goes to black. That blender one, one was that blender scene was pretty baller. <laughs> <laughs> all right, tell us about Slumber Party Massacre. This is from 1982. Was this just like serious trying to be scary? It was on Shutter, and I just recently got Shutter, which is, it seems it's a streaming cool. service, right? Yeah, it's a streaming service for horror films. I could have brought that up. Are earlier, thrillers but... in horror? Is it thrillers uh, or, yeah, or is it just horror? It's pretty much just horror. Okay. Yeah. And camera lenses. Shutter. 
Yes, of course. Just no, this is Shutter. Like, ooh, oh, ooh. Yeah, okay. But the plot is, if you need to know what the plot is of Slumber Party Massacre, a, a high school student slumber party turns terrifying as an escaped mental patient with a drill decides to crash the evening. Oh, with a drill. With a drill. Ugh. With a drill. This is like a, oh shoot, uh, for No Country for Old Men, but like even worse. It, it is he just far drill, worse. Is he just film. drilling? Yes, that film. Yes, that wasn't a drill. I said he had. I know he had the pneumatic thing at least. So this is yeah, yeah. Well, this is rapid fire movie review. Hit Jeff it. Beck from the Examiner. Fans of the genre will find little to appreciate here, while those who aren't fans will find even less. Ouch. Unless you're desperately looking for a little TNA and blood, then it's best <laughs> to stay away from this party. Which is ironic because you were looking for that. Yeah. Scott Weinberg from <laughs> eFilmCritic.com. You get what you pay for with this title. Uh, and Aaron W., this is an audience review. This is not a critic. This is somebody that oh, just watched the man movie. Man of the people. Yes, this is a, a horrible film. Oh. No, <laughs> no <laughs> you, can, you can really tell when it's written by a... <laughs> yes. No tension, no scares, bad dialogue, bad acting, just a stupid, lazy slasher with an idiot running around with a drill. At least, one, or at one point, as people are being murdered, a girl eats a pizza. Oh. This sums the film up. Trash. <laughs> it's a pretty good review. And On the poster, they're all laying around in their long that hooray. That's pretty accurate. Now, would you say, though, a lot of these horror movies, this genre, is something that that, that makes them part of what people watch them? Okay, the seventh. Yes. I know this is a terrible pod, but the seventh picture on IMDb's photos is just this that's the <laughs> opening a lady scene. Who's on, all right, let me pull it up. Let me. I got to have it on. That's the opening you. scene. Show it again. A, show it again. It's show a, it again. Here, where do I show it? Right. This camera right, right here. there. Yeah. This is the seventh picture on IMDb. It goes further, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Well, uh, it's that's just, it's, it's just hilarious. That, like scene. it's like oh look look at Michelle Michaels as she's acting. Yes. <laughs> you can't see her face. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you about that. So it's 77 minutes long. Which I was excited about because I don't like long movies, but it feels way longer than that. Uh, this movie is directed by straight up creepers. They're, it's straight <laughs> up. There's so many lingering nude shots, like for no reason. Like, and yeah, we all can appreciate that on a certain level. But it was almost like, man, if anybody needs to be me too, it's these guys. It's like, directed by a female. Well, hey, females can be me was too. Was it really? Amy Holden Jones. Well, there you go. Well, there you go. Yeah, it's the she's the right. writer of Mystic Pizza. And and a, another thing, I was they there were so many uh, women that were naked, like nice. over ten. And I'm thinking, like, how did they get all these people to agree to that? <laughs> Especially because there's one scene where they're just in the shower. It was the '80s, man. Like for no reason, and it's just they're not even talking. It's just shots of them, shots of them. It goes on for a long time. Well, uh, this is also what year did it was released again? 1982. That that it wasn't there like from like. Mid seventies to late eighties, that was the producer talk. Like, oh, you got to get someone at least topless in the movie. I guess, but this is way over. Right? The top. Am I wrong about that? Like when Porky's oh, became yeah, a, like was became successful. Like, oh yeah, we gotta gotta do at least one scene. Gotta do at least one, and then this lady's like, let's do ten. Well, yeah, it, it's it's over. The Plus, top. it's called slumber party. So, isn't that kind of the fantasy people have about slumber parties? I yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So. But okay, was so, there at least a pillow fight in it? There, I don't think so. Well, that's not a slumber party. But one of the, the things that irritated me is the killer. He uses a drill, and it's a it's not like a handheld drill. This is a big industrial drill with a drill bit like this long. <laughs> so where's okay. the where's the power coming from? Exactly, he never plugs it in. That's what I'm talking about. It's never plugged in. His evil powers it. Yeah, he just he's running around. Well, with probably it, his name was Dewalt, and he like oh. developed the first wow. <laughs> A cordless. Well, it would be cool if like he it, had to kill people, but he had to like, find an outlet before he could kill somebody. And if you're well, not even that, if you, if, you outside, feet, if you have a you drill, right I mean, I can see that being suspenseful when you hear the noise. But it's like, that's like a, in most, a, a of the time, you know it's coming. When it what? It, sometimes he did hit people with it. Oh, instead of that's, so that's resourceful. So I mean, that was okay. That would be great. It's like, hey, c come back here. I, I only have a twenty foot range. Please, uh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Anybody that ran outside was safe. That would build suspense, though. If there was somebody like up against the wall and he was like there, but that was as far as his cord would let him get, and they like, you know, couldn't quite. You should get. write the fifth one. Yeah. It looks like a drill bit they use it. Like, if you ever go skiing, they'll drill in the ground to like put a pole that will like have yep. a sign it's and they exactly have these giant that. drill yep. bits. <laughs> yep. That's it would be exactly hilarious if you had an arsenal of different drills. Oh. And there's, there's so a. So you had like the, the gas powered ones that you do, like the. Con like, <laughs> The concrete stuff, and you're digging, you know, like you said, post holes. Yeah, yeah. You just run around like this. <laughs> so there you go. You could you could have used that one because it's cordless. They could have. They I mean, could like have. you know, there was like eight inches wide. 
Yeah. yeah. And there's could have gotten that drill from Armageddon that they used to drill into the asteroid. There's an actress that's supposed to be or that's in it that's supposed to be twelve, like the little sister of the main girl. <laughs> and she's like older than like half the people in the cast. <laughs> like it's it's just not believable at all. She's like, eh, I'm gonna go out. Oh. And it's like, no, you're not old enough to go to this party. Again, it's like, Chris, she's freaking forty five years these old. These kind of movies that that's why they like that's why people watch them. I, I guess so. You don't think so? You don't think well, they make movies movie, like that? It, Just for people talking about it like we're doing now? It wasn't terrible. Okay. And I'm going to watch the other that? two. Oh, there's there's the, the second one and the third one. Because, <laughs> you all, know... all that said, I will watch the, the there's whole trilogy. Enough, there's enough Again, there. Again, see, he's into that stuff. Yeah. So There's enough there. Is it the same people in number two and three? I don't know. I, I haven't my, looked my at it. My guess is not. Is it the same drill? Ooh. It did look like it was the same drill. What if that drill possessed whoever held it and it wasn't even that guy's fault? Well... I hope that's Devil not the drill. plot because you would have ruined it for me. <laughs> but he's an he's an escape mental patient with a drill, and um, I don't know. But I'm, I'm going to give it. Uh, it's not for it's kids. Shutter.com. It's not for kids. What year did Halloween come out? This has to just be 1976? like 1976. Okay, they were like, well, how can we do a worse version of Halloween? Okay, he doesn't have a knife. He has a drill. They're at a slumber party. Yeah. No, I think the slumber party probably came first. And then they're like, what should the murder weapon be? It's like, I don't know. Let's go see what's at Home Depot. <laughs> exactly. And then it's like, oh. Exactly. And the killer, he doesn't even like hide his face. Like you see him the entire time. So well, he's a mental patient, Chris. He probably doesn't. I like, guess. He might not really think about that. Consequences aren't part of his uh, yeah. range of emotion. But I would say it, it's worth watching. <laughs> okay. I love you. I mean. You know, you should check it out. Probably, it's probably <laughs> worth watching. All right, let's group. Let, 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 let's uh, tag team it here on the Joker. Uh, this is one that's in theater. It's still in theaters now. I'm guessing, right, Chris? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh-huh. Still in theaters now. Uh, two hours, two minutes. Rated R, starring uh, the one and only Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin. Okay. Joaquin. Okay. We get more, it. He has many names. Uh, Robert De Niro is in this uh, as the Tonight Show type host. Uh, which was very interesting. Uh, and then, uh, let's see, anybody else of note to mention? Uh, probably not. All right. The plot of this is, says that, uh, hold on, where'd it go? Uh, in Gotham City, mentally troubled comedian Arthur Fleck is disregarded and mistreated by society. He then embarks on a downward spiral of revolution and bloody crime. This path brings him face to face with his alter ego, the Joker. All right. First thoughts. What y'all, overall thoughts about the movie? Uh, that wasn't exactly an accurate description of it. <laughs> I thought, uh, kind of walking away. I thought, oh, I'm never walking living, away. I'm never uh, <laughs> living in a big city <laughs> or taking public transportation in big yeah, city. There's some tough, tough transportation scenes. I, like everyone's just a jerk yeah. in Gotham. I, Gotham sucks. I think that the movie was a little irresponsible. Oh, what? Here we go. Yeah. Here we go. How? Well, I think it glamorized that type of mental illness um and the people that i saw not 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 you think he seemed like happy and that was an appealing life that he was because he survived would it be better if he died Uh, no well probably what would make you feel better about it well it kind it made him a hero at the end not really i don't want to ruin it for anybody yeah it did how did it not i think he kind of left at the end that that's why batman was created yeah, which, which Gotham, of that, the whole idea of which, Gotham. I needed... guess he's going to be like eighty when he fights Batman. Well, yeah, okay. So I mean, not to <clears throat> not to give too much away, but also like he becomes an integral I part think of the Batman. We can do a spoiler story. alert here. Joker's okay. been out for a while. Yeah, spoiler alert. Spoiler go see alert. it if you want to see it. Fast forward. Go see it. Fast forward or don't. Listen. It's worth. I, I what I would tell people is go see it. Just the fact that you could talk to people about it because it is worth. It's fun to talk about. It. Yeah, it was. Wor- it's definitely mm-hmm. worth watching. And this is, in my opinion, the best DC movie made in a while of, of all the ones that they've been putting out. Yeah. With, you know, the different Justice League and Suicide Squad and all that stuff. This is it's totally different vibe, which everybody I think it's been branded that way. It's dark. It's you know, it's not really an action movie even at all. It's a it's a drama about this guy's terrible life. But yeah, so okay, so here comes the spoilers. So he killed Batman's parents. I mean, we're supposed. But he to, didn't. He indirectly did. But we're supposed to believe that he was like forty when that happened. How old was he in the movie? Was he thirty? He I'm like, say he was he's his, probably like he was in his young thirties. I thought. Okay, so say he was thirty and Batman was. I would say 10. four. I was now. Nah, yeah, I would say ten to thirteen. So there's a twenty age. year age gap. So by the time Batman's fighting crime, even if it, even if Batman is charitably, like, thirty. In, in those mm-hmm. movies, so Joker is like fifty, and he's p- pulling off these like 
high. I always felt Batman's age. It just depended on what setting you put him in because it didn't really matter. He was always going to be rich. He's always getting like I think it was more of like how did he transition into Batman? Because I just felt like that was such like because what was it the uh, Gotham series TV series made him basically decide to become Batman at like eighteen or sixteen or something like that where he left to, like to go train and go do these things and then come back as Batman. Yeah, he had to go get that I, flower from the I top of the mountain. I well, didn't that was they needed. <laughs> they didn't need. That's my that point. In That's there. my point. They do this stuff. It's like the people who are so like, I don't know. To well, me, to me, it's people who are like, "Oh, give me, give me an Easter egg, give me a, yeah. oh, I need, well, I need a tie in. Oh, oh, did you see it? Did you see it? Oh my gosh!" And then they can be the smart person who's like, "Hey, that was Batman's, pa- you know, hey, that was Batman's." Well, parents. one thing that would yeah. be yeah. what I think would have been good, and and this is something, especially when you're writing a Batman movie, you're trying to, you're either writing for just an enclosed one movie, or you're like, "Hey, we got to leave something open for the next movie." And what the problem I saw when I was watching Joker was, I go, "This is a really good movie." But there's just no way this is going to be in a Batman movie. No. Like, I don't see Batman existing in this world they portray the Joker in. And no. I, I agree. And I think if they have Joker in another movie, it won't be him. Well, and that's what sucks, because when you decide to make, say, Batman 2 or whatever, and you had the Joker in, the thing that's going to mess with audiences is you don't see the Joker as much as you saw the Joker in this movie. Because the one thing I liked about this movie was it did explain the Joker and who he is, because one thing I, I, that's what I like about the Joker and, but if you make a Batman movie, you're going to be like, well, I care more about seeing the Joker, not about Batman. I really don't care about this detective stuff. Like, I want to see the Joker be the Joker. But you can't do that when you're doing a Batman movie. Yeah. Because if you remember, that's one thing, like, you think about uh, the Dark Knight series, when you saw the Joker, you saw a little bit about him climbing the ladder and intertwining into the Gotham underground. But he wasn't the main movie. There was other stuff going on. So I just don't see it be. I think that's gonna be a challenge to make a Batman movie with him in it. Where where I think it's irresponsible is the wrong person watches this movie, and I could see it like kind of. Well, this was a social comment. Th- no, this movie was a commentary about how we, as Gotham, you could say that's our our today's world, doesn't take care of people who are sick. Fine, yeah. but so and there's nothing. I don't. That's not make dangerous. A movie, yeah, but you can do that. Joke, that's gonna bring comic book kids out and stuff like that because it's a Joker. You could have done that in a different film, you know. But I, I don't know. I just felt it was a little bit gratuitous in that regard. I liked the bait and switch with the girl that he was like hooking up with because that part. Oh I, yeah. I was going like, me and Lindsay saw this together and we're like, okay, he's like she's just down for him, like what you know, you know. And then, well, there was that you awkward moment where he says something like, where she goes up to the door and she goes, yeah. "Did you follow me today?" And he just kind of goes, yeah, I did. And then when it when nothing really conflicting happened, I was like, oh, I don't know, I know what this is. Okay. Because <laughs> a normal person would be like, why did you follow me? <laughs> and that didn't happen. And but I think what kind of bothered me about that is I never really thought of the Joker having romantic yeah. intentions. Like what I would have done changed in that se- segment is he always seemed to be wanting a family, and I would have had him doing stuff with the family. Like the girl and like mm-hmm. being neighbors and helping out, like getting groceries or something, you know, something like that. And the twist I would have had in it is when he wanted to help the girl, and the girl doesn't know who, the little girl doesn't know who he is. And that's when that's the twist because it's like, wait a second, this little girl doesn't know who he is. Then how what's well, going on in the past? Because I didn't really, I don't see the Joker needing a romantic connection with somebody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't see that. But maybe that was him trying to be human or normal or whatever. Well, that's, well, that's just, what I was saying. Yeah. I would have done the family angle, gotcha. not the romantic gotcha. angle. Because yeah, yeah, that scene where he walks in and kisses her and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's like, man, if he gets laid, he's saved. Like, <laughs> bet, yeah, that's probably true. If just one girl would have, if, you yeah, know, but caught a grenade, takes a hand. Well, I never think mind. in no way does he beat Heath Ledger's performance. I know it's two different movies, but I, I think well, there are some elements yeah. to this movie that I, I agree. I, I kind of like. It, 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 I can't imagine being an actor going, "All right, you got to be crazy." So what is crazy? Because some of the crazy is in the script, like wh- what you say and what the actor, like what happens to the world to you. But then there's some scenes in this movie. Where he's like just being awkward with his the, body, yeah, the weird dancing stuff. And I was kind of like, you know, I can get the dancing stuff, but there's certain scenes where he's like purposely, yeah, like doing like his where, body. That one where he's shirt, like, his, yeah. he's shirtless with his now, back. It's just like to show. Well, look at how much weight I lost. Exactly. Well, no, exactly. it's more like. Well, I was trying to connect, and maybe the uh, listener can tell me is that there was a really important scene about his mom and the way he was beaten. Now, was that something I needed? Yeah. I missed where it's like, oh, he wouldn't just bash his head in like. He broke his entire shoulder and like all this stuff because there's a lot of scenes where he's drooping and I'm like, all right, so is that connected to the beating or is that? 
I think it's like, just because he's weird. I think. Well, I don't know. And that's what kind of weirded me out is I was like, okay, I'm trying to connect with that because I think it's just awkward, those scenes. Like, I, I was like, I don't get it. But then they connected him sometimes really well, like where he was reimagining or imagining doing the Tonight Show. Yeah. Like that, to me, I can see this guy doing that. And especially I loved the idea of him going to that night, going to commit suicide. Yeah. And then the twist. And I was like, I dig that because yeah. that's one thing I like. I think this movie did well with the Joker is – the, th- the threatening thing about the Joker is no one can predict what he's going to do, and he always is ext- he can become extremely violent all of a sudden, like a turn of a knot. Yeah. And and that's why I didn't like about Suicide Squad Joker is I'm watching that movie and I'm like, in what world does this the Joker deck out a Lamborghini? Yeah. That like movie, I just don't see that. Like Suicide Squad was terrible. But was like so this world, I see it because like another great scene that I loved was the scene where all the Jokers are on the the train and they're chasing. Joaquin Phoenix, and then he gets into the train, and the scene where they're surrounding the cop, pull the cop out, and the Joker or Joaquin Phoenix character comes out and just goes, "Huh, lucky me," you know, like because that's what yeah. jo- Joker just rolls with it. He doesn't have a plan. He has like, "Oh, I have a goal," but he's not like the Riddler or anything like that, where he knows exactly what's going to happen at this time. It's like I'm just going to roll with it, and the chaos is going to follow. And that's what I dug about it. And I just don't see where they're going to go with this. Unfortunately, that's what sucks. They're not going to probably go anywhere. I think it's a one-off probably would yeah. be my guess. I, I think, Robert, to me, Robert De Niro was a part of this movie that I did not really appreciate that much. I thought he just felt... I don't know. I know that he, was just a felon, man. They just needed somebody to portray the but, Murray character. And he's like, he was somewhat of a dad character. Cause you show, it showed him. But I feel like he was just but, as an actor kind of mailing that in. I don't know. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, it could be anybody. Yeah. It could have yeah. been anybody. It being De Niro was just totally like, we need a, fam- we need a famous Which face I there. It. Well, one thing, too, that's hard to give people perception is how important Gotham is. Because Gotham is its own single planet, almost. Because it's not like New York City where everyone can watch what... New York's doing it's like if you're doing a show that's Gotham based only because when you watch the Tonight Show you don't think just New York people get it because it's just in New York yeah so I think that a lot of people miss that and it's like he's a local celebrity not a world celebrity also tough look for stand-up comedy right like (laughs) trying to be uh I got some jokes oh (laughs) you know I I, uh, Lindsay read a thing where he apparently like listen to you know, it's such like actors are so full of themselves. But he listened to like ten hours of of people with laughing disabilities or like where they laugh compulsively. Or I dug whatever. that. I dug that I, I part. To me, that was a little bit overplayed. Like, you're well, the, the, you're well, the, the Joker, thing that so sucks. So okay, wow. You couldn't really tell when it was happening because like there was a scene where he was in the locker room with his buddies, and he makes a joke while walking away, and he does this laugh, and then he just shuts up. Like he's like ha ha, and he turns the corner like looking all serious. I go, well, mm-hmm. did he control that? Or was that an uncontrollable one? Because I couldn't really tell when he was having the disability of it and not having the disability of it. I just think if you master cut like all the scenes of him laughing into one clip, it'd be like nine minutes long probably on mm-hmm. this one. I mean, it's so much. It, that's what, it, it got a little bit overkill to me. Yeah. But all in all, this was this was a good movie. He did a really good job. I would say go see it for sure. Um uh, I don't. It's just the best DC movie that's come out in a while, in my opinion. Yeah. What you could do is enter our drawing for our ticket giveaway to the go. grand, and you can go see it this weekend. There you go for freeze. All right, we got one more thing we're gonna talk about. We'll, we'll power through this. Uh, I don't think it'll take too too long. Uh, Chris, were you able to come up with some firsts? I was. Dick, did you come up with any firsts? If if so, you can just add. You can hop in, add the conversation. So we're gonna just do some of the first things for us related to movies. Uh, first one, uh, Chris, I'll start with you. What's the first movie? I got. I, don't know, I was just walking my dog and got a little nostalgic about movies. First movie that made you really love movies. Was there one that stood out? Yeah, nineteen eighty nine Batman. Okay, is that Michael Keaton? Yep. Yeah, that's such a. So I, I just rewatched The Shining because me and Lindsay were gonna go see Doctor Sleep and then we didn't. But mm-hmm. anyways, he's so good. Oh yeah. And in that movie is that was like one of the first movies I remember. Like that. To me, that was like the first time I saw him. Well, the the it, and the movie was so different. Yeah. From anything that had come out before. So that yeah, that that's the one that kind of was that did the first Batman me. that was actually kind of like a little dark. Yeah, because before that, the Joker is like it's like pow, bam, yep. wham, yep. and then this one comes and it's actually got some edge to it and everything. Yep. That was the first one. Yeah. All right. Cool. Do you, can you think of one off the top of your head? Yeah, that? I would say Star Wars: The okay. New Hope. Yeah, the first one. Or I guess the the original three. The fourth one. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, for me, I put Shawshank Redemption. I probably saw that. Hmm. I probably didn't really love movies until I was a teenager. You know, and, I mean, I liked them. I mean, like kids, you know, whatever. But I remember seeing that as a, as a teen and really feeling like I don't even know if I fully understood. But I was like, there's, "This is special. Like this, there's something about this that is really, really cool." And you know, there's a lot going on. Uh, what about the first movie that scared you? 
first movie that truly scared you? That scared me. Ooh. And this is kind of later in life. Not later in life, but uh, the Blair Witch Project. I, I still have not seen that. That scared me to death. I saw it in a, in a movie theater. Those carrot fingers really scared you? And it, <laughs> Weren't there like fingers. some carrot fingers or something? At the end. No. Yeah. No, it wasn't. Yeah, when he she drops when he drops the, the camera, like you carrots. see, like you actually see the witch for a half a second. No, you don't. Yeah, you do. It's I'm pretty like, sure it's little hand. It's a hand. What? No. Well, I'll you have keep to talking. I'm gonna look it yeah, up. Yeah, you look. I'm, it up I'm, I'm gonna Google Blair Witch carrot fingers and yeah, see if that so, comes up with anything. Yeah. So, so I remember I was I was watching it in the theater and I had someone with me and I was a lady. Like, so it, it was a lady, but it wasn't a date. <laughs> oh yeah. And uh, she didn't think so. Uh, yeah, she didn't think so. And so yeah, I was like sweating in the end and I was just like oh my god and my heart was like pounding it was crazy how much that affected me and a lot of people hate that movie but th- for some reason I just got it well I think that movie also is very it depends on where you watch it because it's very claustrophobic if you're like if you try to watch it say on a laptop under under your bed sheets it'd get real <laughs> like that but if you uh, where I watched that movie with headphones mm-hmm. and then like in the dark in the dark and it, I bet like, you could hear a lot better like, it's, like especially it's, in the tent it's or real scary, yeah. and that's one thing. Uh, any movies can be like, can be scary. So, when you do that, when you put yourself in that scenario, so. Uh, did you say? Did you say one? Sorry, I'm well, googling here. I apparently I, carrot fingers does not come up as a my. Uh, I this. I wouldn't. <laughs> the first sca- you were talking about the first scary movie. The movie that you remember, remember really scaring you. Um, well, it's uh, technically it's the TV movie It. Okay. That really, that was, I saw that when I was like six. Yeah, I never saw that one. And my brothers didn't make me watch it, but they wanted me to watch it. And so I just, that branded me forever. I can't watch scary movies really now because my imagination runs with it. Like, I remember watching The Strangers and I had like night terrors for three weeks, just like thinking people were outside my door. Like when the, like when people ring the doorbell, I'm like, oh, here we go. Here we go. I'm going to be traumatized. Yeah, so. I wanted me and I wanted me and Lindsay to watch Us the other day. The the new uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Get Out, uh, mm-hmm. whatever. Anyway, dude, that trailer that I have not seen that movie still. That looks freaky. Uh, that's not my pick, but as far as one that like I feel like would make me wonder for a while, like who's out there? Is there anybody on the shadows? For me, my first movie that really scared me. I, I was probably too young when I first saw Event Horizon. And that's There's just some a, great scenes. That's in just movie. a weird. I mean. It is scary, I guess. It's just it's like, Sam Neill is so good. Yeah, he really yeah. is. And that movie, I just it was so dark and so it got so weird there at the end that it really kind of messed me up a little bit. I've never quite been the same. What's the first movie you wanted to rewatch over and over again? Uh, Goldeneye. Oh, yeah. so you've been, you've, been, you've been a Bond boy from the beginning. Yeah, that was the first movie I ever saw in the theater by myself. Oh, so. you know what they did really well in that version of Bond is all the characters that interact with James are very good. Yeah. Like every, like almost every character is like unique, and I might be because of the video game, because you could pick those characters. Goldeneye is the first game I wanted to play. Over but no, like yeah, it's such a great game. But no, that's what I mean. A lot chops, of the characters written in it were good, especially was it Valentine? He was in multiple versions of. Uh yeah yeah uh, Valen Valentine Valentine Sakovsky yeah no, yeah, no oddball though it's like, he was it's in two of them fair, right he, he was in two two he movies was in I think he's in at least two of them yeah, yeah he was in two and he gets booted. It's not fair if you use Oddball because he's so short. You have to aim odd down. Job. Odd job. I mean. Odd job. Yeah. I like Oddball. That, that yeah. should be the new guy. That's right. <laughs> Bring in the Oddball. oddball. For, uh, for me, I, Anchorman was the first movie that I really wanted to just watch yes. over. And I probably saw Anchorman a hundred times. Very good. Uh, I bet you like I love that blooper reel. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And then I, I, re- I watched the one on YouTube where it was the new movie they made with Anchorman, right? Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. the whole new plot or whatever. Yep. Uh, the legend of Ron Burgundy. That's right. Yeah. That's so, you have one, Dick? Uh, fa- Star first, Wars. Oh, there we go. All sure. right, we get a little overlap. What about the first one that got to your emotions? Hitch in the field. Star Wars. Oh. <laughs> well, there you go. That's fair. It has it all. Uh, do you have one? Uh, field of Dreams. Oh, uh, yeah. But not to the end, yeah. obviously. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it kind of got me. Yeah. I, you know, you saying that, uh, I didn't put this one down, but Rudy was definitely one of those Yeah, for Rudy's me. great. Ru- Rudy's tough because it's like an hour and a half of, like, so slow. I remember I lived, I lived there while they were filming that, you lived or by lived, Notre Dame. Yeah, very mm. close to there. Okay, and I remember they were I, people were talking about it, but it was the kid. Everybody was talking about, oh, the kid from the Goonies <laughs> is there making a the movie. I remember that from when I was younger. Well, hmm. realis- realistically, I would say uh, American History X is when I, I remember. Got watching to your emotions? That. Yeah, oh, the okay. shower scene. <laughs> yeah, that. No, no, the whole movie was really good. I watched it with my brother, and it really like it got to me because I mean it really got uh. to me because. 
I watched it with my brother who was older. Yeah. And there's a there's a brother relationship oh, yeah. in the movie and so, you know and I'm like that's so, like that movie's so good. It's so so good. And I just heard an interview a podcast with uh, Edward Norton and they were talking about the basketball scene in that movie and how they had to, like lower the rims down to like seven uh, for seven and a half feet or whatever so he could do all the all the dunks and everything. <laughs> and I think they surrounded yeah. him by like guys who weren't really that tall uh, so that he seemed a lot bigger and more imposing. Uh, for me, the first movie that got to my emotions, I don't know, again, why do, why do these certain things stick out in my head? I don't know. But the rom-com serendipity with... Uh, no, with uh, yeah, I know. I mean, whatever, man. Judge me if you want, but only God can judge me, so that's what I say. Uh, but I just remember Kate Beckinsale and... Uh, or not Kate Beckinsale, Kate... Yeah, Beckinsale. And uh, John Cusack, and for whatever reason, that movie, I remember being like, this is what love is like. You know, this is yeah, what I, know. <laughs> I think we all have that moment when we watch the movie, like, oh, yeah, that's what I'm going to get. And then you're just beat down by the world. Like, Eight, for the 18 rest breakups of your life. later, I'm like, yeah. where's my dollar bill with the name on it? Anyways, it's about the movie serendipity. What about, okay, last one. First movie that made you feel like a man. Let's end on a manly note. Uh, for me, it's Days of Thunder, the Tom oh, Cruise, shoot. Tom yeah. Cruise yeah. NASCAR movie. That was awesome. Nineteen ninety, oh, so I think good when it came out. Yeah, see, Top Gun would be another one. Mm-hmm. More, Days of Thunder is good, but for me, Top Gun of those two, I like Top Gun more. It's Top Gun on wheels, basically. Yeah, well, I like Top Gun in the air. I'm more of an air <laughs> guy. So, do you have one, uh, Dick? A movie that made you feel manly back in the day? Uh, Star I, Wars? No, uh, I would say. Like either Die Hard or Predator. Oh, Die Hard! Man, there's so many good movies. Because like one of my what if movies never existed? Life would suck. But why has Predator never existed? Then life would suck. Yeah. Because then you would have time to bleed. Lethal Weapon, Die Hard, and Predator <laughs> around that around the same time. If it weren't for Predator, I'd be like, that was good. I could. I wasn't for some reason. I wasn't allowed to watch Predator when it first like because I mean, but then I could watch Lethal Weapon and Die Hard. But then when I finally, I was like, I guess my parents realized how Predator's Probably the skinning people. Yeah. Was well, that might be a little bit of it. If it weren't for Predator, I'd still probably be just pushing pencils somewhere, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know. <laughs> That's a great movie, too. Oh, so good. Uh, for me, Braveheart made me feel like a man. Yeah. I mean, just. I almost said that. Yeah. One. Braveheart, just like standing up like, oh, I'll die for my freedom. And then, of course, I didn't like enlist or anything in any sort of armed forces. But I like the idea of that a lot. Like fighting against tyranny or whatever might hold you back. Uh, anyways, that's all we got for first. Anybody have another first they want to throw out there? One more? I didn't prepare you for that. Just <laughs> no, I don't have <laughs> you one. You got any more first? What's the first uh, Slumber Party movie that you've ever seen? <laughs> Slumber Party Massacre. What's it's... the first drill-related horror movie that you've ever seen? Slumber Party wow, Massacre. Wow, that one's really hit. Uh, that one in Star Wars have been two of the most influential movies for our lives. <laughs> yes. Well, cool. Well, that's gonna let's wind it down and wrap it up. Uh, hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, make sure you always are, you know, reaching out. We got the ticket giveaway. We got social media, all that stuff. Sorry, we've been a little inconsistent with shows. Try to get that either uh, get that back on track in some sort of a regular format. But anyways, uh, we for Dick for Chris. My name is Connor. Signing off Woo. on the ticket stub.